Alright, sorry, I always checking something out. Shalom family, um, I'm coming to you guys today. I'm fresh out the shower. I was in the garden on the side of my house today. Finally got that done. I put some manure down, so in about a week I'll go ahead and plant those seeds. Um, and I'll do another garden update for you guys. We have some stuff coming up in the backyard. Um, last garden update, I showed you guys the little flowers that was coming up in the front yard. So I will show you guys um, the flowers that are coming up in the backyard. And I didn't realize one of my earrings was out, but <laughs> for the sake of this video, y'all, I just don't don't pay attention because I don't feel like going to get it. <laughs> and um and you guys see my hair. I think this is the first time you guys ever seen my hair because I always have braids in and it's actually longer than it looks it's just really curly and so long it actually is yeah, let's see and it's just really curly so my hair it just like retains you know like what's the word yeah, it, I forgot what that word is. Like retention, retain. I forget. But it just revert. It reverts. It just reverts back up. No, and like in order, I would have to straighten it every day, which I don't want to do. So we're doing a curly look today, guys. Uh, <laughs> don't hate on me. You know how y'all can get some. <laughs> Well, not y'all, not my subscribers, but you know, people visiting videos, they come and they talk stuff. Okay, but that's the half. This is what I'm coming to you guys today for. I have two books. I told you guys in my last video, I think it was the video I did about um, Infinity War. And I also told you guys in another video before that, but I didn't actually start doing it yet. I hope that sun, sun comes back out because that was our light. And it was very, feeling very good in my skin right now. Um, but I have these two books I want to talk about. Now, this first book, um, I'm not going to read on this video. I just want to show it to you guys because we're going to be reading it. And I want you guys to stay tuned for it. So it says, make sure that's stand on. So it says, Reversing Disease and Saving the Planet with a Plant-Based Diet. The God Awakening Diet. It's recipes included. So we're going to be doing some of those recipes. And I'm going to be recording them and putting them on here. So stay tuned, guys, because that is going to be fun. And there's the sun. <laughs> so, yeah, this is this. So <clears throat> it says, Life is sustained by natural patterns of energy that interact to create synergy. These patterns are a reflection of the natural order of energy that per, 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 permeates, I'm sorry, every living thing. And I refer to this as this energy as God, the source, nature, and an attempt to encompass all views that recognize this order. We were once in tune with these natural patterns. However, blind con consumerism encourages us to mindlessly disregard synergy and pillage our land for the sake of profit. Industrialization fueled by greed and gluttony promotes a processed and meat-centered diet that disturbs the natural patterns of the earth's ecosystem. The constant consumption of meat and processed foods aids the prof prof proliferation sorry, of disease in the body and in the earth. Meat-centered diets are also the catalyst of the inhumane treatment of animals, deforestation, land erosion, depletion of fresh water, and climate change. The mechanisms employed to satisfy the demand for meat, meat-based products, and processed foods severely compromise the nature patterns that are in place to support life on Earth. So we're going to read this book. Um, now I told you guys last August those orbs showed up to my house like two weeks before that we stopped eating meat completely like we had just stopped eating meat and I don't know if that's what made us be able to see them or what brought them here I don't know but we had completely stopped eating meat 
and um we stopped eating meat for about five months uh we recently started back eating meat um but we're consumption is going down to like two to you know we're going to take consumption down to like two to three meals um with meat a day and not eating meat with breakfast lunch and dinner so you know pancakes eggs sausage you know and then meat at lunch time all right guys i had to make some space <laughs> so i was saying and my hands are so ashy i just got the shower don't mind my hands if you if y'all can see them <laughs> So, um, but I was saying we're going to start eating, you know, meat like two or three times a week, two or three times a week instead of, you know, three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. That's a lot of meat consumption. Um, so I want to, you know, incorporate it in there a little bit until we completely come off because we kind of just like went like cold turkey off meat. And it wasn't so much hard as it was of the, we had lost weight, like, rapidly. So, everybody was losing weight, like, rapidly. I had lost weight. My husband lost weight. Everybody lost weight. And um, we were looking, like, real skinny because we weren't getting, you know, the right protein. So, I have to develop our diet before we just jump in, um, not eat meat. I hadn't developed our diet. So we weren't getting enough of what we needed to sustain um, that type of, those type of eating habits. Um, so yeah, we will talk about this book. And I mean, it has stuff in here about reversing cancer, just all type of good stuff. But the main book I want to read to you guys today is this book. And it's called sit upside down yes <laughs> it's called prophecy i don't know if you guys can see that prophecy by sj is it sj yeah sj paris and uh one of my subscribers they had you know got upset with me they said i think i know everything i really don't it's just that i read a lot so i do know some of the stuff that people mentioned to me and because I don't, you know, I guess because I was, don't act surprised by certain things that people say for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I had one of my subscribers get upset with me and they were telling me about the prophecies being seen with crystals, etc. And I, I knew that because I had read this book. Um, so, you know, I guess he felt like he was telling me something I don't know and said that I think I know everything and you know I can't say I don't think I know everything I don't think I know everything but when I say I know something it's usually when I'm you know stressing a point it's usually because I've studied it um and because I know it like I won't talk about anything that I don't know so like okay if it's a mechanic you know I don't know anything about cars. I'm not going to be like, no, this is this, this is this. I don't know. Those are the times that I be quiet and I listen and I learn. So that's why I know a lot of people tend to think that I come off like I know everything. It's not that. It's just because, first off, I feel like I've been here before. I've lived lives before and this is how I feel you know some people don't understand this the scriptures actually tell us that there will be some people in this time that would be predestined for this from birth that we had lived before the scripture said I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb so some of us here um, we have been places before and we have this type of knowing like sometimes I wake up the next day and I just know things you know what I mean it's just like a knowing and it could just be from dreams experiences that we have when we go into the astral realm um just think we're learning even as we sleep you know what I mean we're getting downloads etc so it's like I wake up and I know things and 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 it's like I know I'll know it and then I'll get confirmation by I'll go and research it and I'll be like you know what how did I know that you know it's like you already know it but you'll go look it up just to make sure it's like somebody is telling you something in your head and so you go and look it up like 
you know, somebody just told me that in my head. It was a guy. You know, that's how stuff always is to me. I'd be like, God told me this. God told me that. And I only do that for, you know, with my personal situations. I don't come on here like God told me tomorrow something going to blow up. Because that's just not realistic. Unless, I mean, you really, you know, you really can talk to God and know everything that he's trying to say to you perfectly which we don't even even the prophets sometimes misinterpreted dreams and they had to ask for the interpretation of the dream you know they, they didn't just know it right off that and I did a video on that when we talked about dreams on how to interpret them how the prophets asked for the interpretation of the dream but I don't want to get too sidetracked I want to go back to this book so this book is called Prophecy, and I want to start reading this book with you guys. It's a really good book, but this this is the guy who was my subscriber. He was talking about how they were seeing the prophecies with crystals. Um, it talks about that in this book. It also talks about a lot of people, um, black Jesus. People like to say Jesus was not black. This book actually tells you that he was. He when they seen him. He was a dark mahogany. And we're going to actually read that. Um, so depending on how long the chapters is, I'm going to read one chapter per video or two, depending on how long they are. Because I don't, um, you know, I want to read the whole thing, you guys. But I don't want to be, you know, reading it all day <laughs> to you guys. So we're going to read, you know, like a chapter or two. So we're going to go ahead and start. And this is the first page. And it says, um, this is Morton Lake House. Oh, I want to actually show you guys this front page. So it says, this book is a thriller. And it says, um, I don't know if you guys can see at the bottom, but it says, New York, London, Toronto, Sydney, and Auckland. I wonder why those places were there specifically. But. He also wrote another book called Heresy, which I'm going to see if I can find because I want to actually read that one as well. But, um, let me go to, to the first page. So it says, Mort Lake House of John D., Southwest London, 3rd of September, Year of Our Lord, 1583. Now, it's a lot of key things I want to point out just in this first chapter, guys. So stay with me. So it says, Without warning, all the candles in the room's corners flicker and, and faint, as if sudden guests had it has entered. As if a, I'm sorry, as if a sudden gust has entered. But the air remains still. At the same moment, the hairs on my arms prickle and stand erect, and I shudder. A cold breath descends on us. Though outside the day is close. Though outside the day is close. I chance a sideways glance at Dr. D. He stands unmoving as marble, his hands clasped as if in prayer, the knuckles of both thumbs pressed anxiously to his lips, or what can be seen of them, through his ash-gray beard, which he wears in a point down to his chest in imitation of Merlin, whose heir D. secretly considers himself. The cunning man, Ned Kelly, kneels on the floor in front of the table of practice with his back to us, eyes fixed on the pale, translucent crystal about the size of a goose egg, mounted in fixings of brass and standing upon a square of red silk. The wood, the wooden shutters of the study windows have been closed. This business must be conducted in shadow and candlelight. Kelly draws breath like a player about to deliver his prologue, and he stretches his arms out wide at shoulder height in the posture of crucifixion. Um, yes, he breathes. Finally, his voice little more than a whisper. He is here. He beckons to me. Who? D leans forward eagerly, his eyes bright. Who is he? Kelly waits a moment before answering, his brow creasing as he concentrates his gaze on the stone. A man of more than mortal height, with skin as dark as polished mahogany. So I say a man of more than mortal height. With skin as dark as polished mahogany, he is dressed head to foot in a white garment, which is torn, and his eyes are of red fire. In his right hand, he holds a lofty sword. Dee snaps his head around then, then and clutches my arm. 
staring at me. The shock of his face must be mirrored in my own. He has recognized the description as I have. As have I. The being Kelly sees in the stone matches the first figure of the sign of Aries, as described by the ancient philosopher Hermes Trismegistus. There are six. There are thirty-six of these figures. There are thirty-six of these figures. The Egyptian gods of time, who rule the divisions of the zodiac, are called by some star demons. Now we're going. We want to look up star demons, y'all. I'm gonna do a video on star demons. And I really think they got something to do with these orbs that we that I'm seeing. But we're going to do that in another video. I want to go ahead and keep going because I don't know. My phone was dying. Oh, yes. It might be about to die. I might have to finish this inside, y'all. So we'll say, The Egyptian gods of time who rule the divisions of the zodiac and are called by some star demons. There are a few scholars in Christendom who could thus identify the figure Kelly sees. And two of them are here in this study in Mortlake. If indeed this is what Kelly sees, I say nothing. What says he, D urges? He holds out a book, Kelly answers. What manner of a book? An ancient book with worn covers and pages of all beaten gold. Kelly leans closer to, to the stone. Wait, he is writing upon it with his forefinger, and the letters are traced in blood. I want to ask what... What, what he has done with the sword while he writes in this book? Has he tucked it under his arm, perhaps? But Dee would not thank me for holding this business lightly. Beside me, he draws in his breath, impatient to hear what the spirit is writing. And he wrote an X and a V, which is Roman numerals. And it says, Kelly reports after a moment, he turns to look up at us. Then over his right shoulder, his expression perplexed, perhaps expecting D to interpret the numerals. 15, Bruno, D whispers, looking again to me, to me for confirmation. I nod once. The lost 15 book of Hermes Trismegistus, the book I had come to England to find. The book I know D had once held in his hands years earlier, only to be robbed of it violently and lose it again. <clears throat> Could it be? It occurs to me that Kelly must know of his ma master's obsession with the 15th book. The scryer raises a hand for silence. His eyes do not move from the crystal. He turns the page. Now he traces it. It seems, yes, he makes a sign. Quickly, fetch me paper and ink. D hurries to bring him the items. Kelly reaches out and flaps his hand impatiently as if afraid the image will fade before he has time to transcribe it. He takes the quill and still gazing intently into the stone, sketches the astrological symbol of the planet Jupiter and holds it up for our inspection. I tense D feels it where his hand still holds my arm and half turns to look at me with questioning eyebrows. I keep my face empty of expression. The sign of Jupiter is my code, my signature. It replaces my name as the sign that my letters of intelligence are authentic. Only two people in the world know this, myself and Sir Francis Walsingham, Her Majesty's Principal Secretary of State and Chief Intel Intelligence. Now, in this book, we're dealing with Queen Elizabeth and Mary Queen of Scots during this time. This is the time frame of Queen Elizabeth and Mary Queen of Scots. I was actually doing research on Mary Queen of Scots when I started reading this book. I had this book for five years. I had never read it until after August. All of this stuff just started happening after August. Now, I've been, you know, reading the Bible since 2012. It really started happening in 2012. I got sick. and I, That's another video. Let's, <laughs> let's not go there. But, um, so, let's finish. It say, Her Majesty's Principal Secretary of State and Chief Intelligence, sir. It is a, it is a common enough sign in astrology and coincidence, surely, that Kelly has drawn it. Still, I regard the back of Kelly's head. Oh, bug. <laughs> this is a bug on my lap. <laughs> Okay. Surely that Kelly has drawn it. Still, I regard the back of Kelly's head 